Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. In today's game, passing may come at a cost. The Browns are top 10 in forcing interceptions, and they'll be up against the Jets, who will be testing that coverage. So for the call of this week 17 matchup, let's send it out to our broadcast team, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. We are just a stone's throw away from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as we get set for football at First Energy Stadium in Cleveland, Ohio. Today, we're set for a good AFC matchup between the New York Jets and the Cleveland Browns. Hi again, everyone, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Browns ball club. They've been as hot as anyone. The win last week makes it 9 out of 10. The results are hard to argue. If there's a team better suited for the postseason right now, I don't know who they are. Meanwhile, for the visiting Jets, they were losers their last time out. They're going to try to get back in the win column, but obviously they're going to have to do that in a hostile environment. And sometimes it actually works to your advantage. Now you've got to band together your team, the us against the world mentality. Let's see if they can use it and get a victory. Here we go. The final week of the NFL season. Week 17 is underway. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. So now here comes the Jet offense as they get ready to take over. And they'll be led out by their third-year quarterback. defense feeling the encouragement they stop him at the line of scrimmage on the first play of the afternoon and the defensive line controls the offensive front the way we just saw there it doesn't allow any of the offensive linemen to leak downfield and get to the linebackers and block them on the second level you end up with the type of play we just saw linebackers didn't have to fight anyone off didn't have to knock anyone to the side didn't have to elude anyone trying to block them they just saw the play ran to the ball and finished things off Two plays in a row, the defense won, stacking up the running game. They've got to feel good about themselves, but something has to be in the back of their minds. Are we being set up for something big? They've got to be careful. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he'll be hit from behind and taken down. And now that brings up fourth down there, a loss of six yards on the sack. Well, how about that? A dime set on defense, six defensive backs. None of them blitz. They're just back there in coverage. Defensive lineman gets the sack. That's where the O-line, they go to the sideline, they keep the, their helmets on so the cameras can't find them, right? Yeah, the cameras can't find them, but I know one thing, the O-line coach will. Now Jordan Berry on to kick this one away. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. This will be down by a member of the kicking team just outside of the 30-yard line. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. And leading him out, their veteran quarterback. look is incomplete and now this offensive unit we get a look at their starters they put up good numbers last week looking to carry that forward yeah Brandon they saw the numbers from last week they expect to at least replicate them they think that they can put up bigger numbers this week they are a confident bunch Try the ground game here with the running back. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. And they'll lose a yard that time. And that's going to lead to a third down. 
The evaluation process in today's NFL does not take into account as much bulk as it does speed. And that's what we're seeing with the linebacker position. Those guys that can run, they can play at any spot because they can make plays on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. And a look now at how the Jets line up defensively. Leonard Williams was one of the top draft picks coming out of USC. And he's done nothing to diminish the comparisons people make of past greats. Seven yards to go on second down. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. A battle for it, and it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. Now they told us repeatedly earlier in the week in our meetings, we need some plays from our defense here on the road early. They got one. And don't think they were above all week long pointing out to their defense that the other defense is rated higher than them. You going to let that happen, guys? Is that how we're going to play? And they responded to the challenge. The Jets offensive unit ready to get going here. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out of a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely surged out that way. You get a second opportunity. Nothing big happened. But then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. Now back to throw. Throwing left side here, and it's complete. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. And frankly, Brandon, we're talking about things I'm not sure we ever thought we'd talk about in the NFL, and a lot of that is the speed at the linebacker position. A lot of these guys in college, they were safeties. They moved them up to outside linebacker to combat the spread offenses, and now we're seeing it in the NFL, those same guys using their speed to make plays in the backfield, similar to that one. And boy, they had high praise for this rookie receiver when we asked the coaches about him, didn't they? They certainly did, and obviously they liked his measurables, otherwise they wouldn't have brought him on to the team. Height, weight, speed, all of that. But how about what they really said? Competitiveness. That's what they really liked about him. The way he goes after the football, competes for it, and decides when it's in the air, it's his and only his. And here's a look at the starting offense. ready to head back out there as they'll take over with a little over a minute to play in this first quarter. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And he is going to lose yardage here. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Well, on that play, the expression, don't blink, you might miss something, certainly applied. That was fast. Defense diagnosed the play, and it was over in a heartbeat. But it's caught on the right side at Smith. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. And another thing that makes the comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receiver's breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. He'll drop to throw. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. 
And now following the incomplete pass, we'll get a timeout here for an injured player. And in week 17, let's hope this won't affect him for the playoffs. We'll step aside. the play fake he'll look to throw and he comes back with one complete give him 12 yards on that one it earns him a fresh set of downs an ex-teammate used to tell me all the time i hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what you really can't hide what you're doing and i think that right there he knew right away where the blitz was coming from where his primary guy was going to be and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game i was just going to ask you that wasn't the primary target and he's so good at that isn't he i think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy i think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage knew where the pressure was going to come from and said ah i know how to beat that and that's what he did now they'll throw here, out of the gun. Over the middle to Smith. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. Back with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. The Browns with a football to begin quarter number two. And they're driving, but they come up on a third and short here. And I see an extra defensive back on the field. A little surprise here on third and one. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. Third and one, partner. No need to be fancy there. Just use some force and move forward and pick up the first down. So it'll be first down here after the run. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. When Leonard Williams was picked in the 2015 NFL Draft, I compared him to Merlin Olsen, and I got a lot of grief about it. Did you just see that play there? Did you see how he made that move and made that tackle? That was Merlin Olsen-esque yeah, right just, there. I just perked up when you said Merlin Olsen. Yeah, a lot of people said, hey, that's too much, too far, and maybe it is early, but I think this guy has a chance of fulfilling that. Now this will be the ninth play on this drive. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And he will find his man on the outside. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Their big body receiver with his 16th touchdown of the year. And the Browns are able to cash in for six. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's pick. the 25-yard line as this offense gets set to take over. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he powers his way up past the 30. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. First play of the drive, let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher, a really nice run. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Oh, he'll want that one back, incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department, third down. 
We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. Right, out of the gun now on third down. Hard throw, incomplete. Timing's crucial in any route thrown, but when you... Two minutes to play in the second quarter. The offense gets ready to take over. From deep in their own territory, they look to throw. He's going to float this one deep right side. He was looking for Devin Smith that time. That'll bring up second down. They weren't able to complete that attempt, and that was a heck of an attempt there from the shadow of their own goal line. But that tells you how much confidence they have in their offensive line. Go ahead, dial one up. Know that they can protect the quarterback and let him fling one downfield. They didn't get it there, but they sent a message for the rest of the game. And able to get it across the 10 to the 15. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Two minutes to go here in the first half. More from Cleveland after this. A reminder that coming up in two minutes, we'll check in with Larry Ridley in Orlando with highlights and analysis of this first half of play. And I'm going to check in with a heater. I'm going to be right there with you, partner. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. Back to throw. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. It's a gain of five, and that's going to bring up a third down. An extra defensive back in the game now here for third and four. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. And he's got his man on the out route. And they get 10 yards there and convert on third. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. 10 yards on the pickup there. And that'll be good for a Cleveland first. Love the call by the offensive coordinator, recognizing the situation very well, calling for the play action pass and completing it. They'll look to throw now on first down. But it's caught on the right side at Smith. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. Defense. Well, they have the yards anyway, so they're going to decline the penalty. So here we go, first and 10 now. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Oh, nice spin. Oh, that brought back bad memories. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Three yards to go on second down. This drive is turning to an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm... Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. On first down, he'll drop to throw. And he will find his man on the outside. That throw good for four. It's second down. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. And he's got his man on the out route. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. It's a 10-yard gain there, and it sets him up now first and goal. Long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. Let's go. First and goal. Defense with their backs against the wall. And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. And with half time on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Now a 
shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. That's caught at the three. So we've come upon halftime. And hello, I guess Larry's halftime show was buttoned through. And we are moving on and ready to go for the third quarter. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Here's the Browns offense now getting set. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. Galvin Kyle has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Second down now after the incompletion. After watching him drop that slant, I can hear my old coach's voice ringing in my ears right now. You can't run with the ball until you catch it. Trying to get those rack yards before he secured it. A nice job to get eight there after the incompletion, and now they'll look at a third and two coming up. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him, so when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, Makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. A good pick up there, a 22. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass right, trick in pregame warm up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they'll it. take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. It's their quarterback. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Browns have taken the lead. So a design run all the way, and he took it the distance. I don't know that anybody saw that coming. This offense will start with tough field position inside the 10. They'll run it now out of the gun. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. That first down play, all you want to do is wedge out any type of space and try and create enough room. If you have to run the punter out there, he can successfully complete the punt. Yeah, he didn't get a ton there, but at least some positive yardage. Yeah, and he's able to get most of what he needed on the carry there. Seven yards on the gain, and it's third and two now. And once again, leverage wins. The offensive line, lower than the defensive front. They moved them and found some good space for the guy carrying the ball. The Jets will bring in a nickel set as they try to stop this third down. Now back to throw, and he will find his man on the outside. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff. Didn't yeah, they? when we talked about him, they did. Yeah, you know, they like his work ethic. You know, this guy's running every route well in the route tree and getting better at it all the time, really honing his game. They expect a pretty good jump out of him as things continue to move on. And this is caught. A spectacular one-handed grab there. It's a gain of 17 that time. And it'll give the Browns a first down. That was a terrific catch. I mean, to go up there and get it one-handed like that, but I almost want to go into that riff about back in my day, the gloves weren't quite like this. When did gloves really become prevalent, just in general? I 
think in the 80s, I think as we started to move through the 80s, especially as we got towards the latter part of that, but a lot of those were really like baseball batting gloves to begin with, with not much of a tacky area on the glove. In fact, there was none. I actually remember in cold weather games wearing the old scuba gloves, which you'd wear in the diving, but they would split too easily in the course of a game. Then the glove manufacturers got smart and started adding to it, and here we are today. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. And they'll run it here. And a nifty little deep juke spin move. Not a great deal there on the back end, but a nice gain still. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Got a man over the middle, and it's complete. 23 yards on the play. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. This will be caught at about the three. One quarter remains here as the regular season starts to wind down. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. It's the Browns football, and they've got the lead here as we start quarter number four. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. They come out here in the eye. Going to give this time to the tailback. And no signal yet. I don't think he got in. He didn't. They'll mark him at the one. And now for the offense, this is play number 11 here on this drive. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. And he takes this one in for a Brown score. A great effort there with his 16th touchdown of the year. And the Browns add six to their lead. And nothing special there. They show they were going to run the football. They ran it. They got it in. Like old-time football, right? Hey, this is exactly what we're going to do. Straight ahead power, and they got it. You into the start of this next possession. The score, 7 0. Detroit! 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 And they'll go with a ground attack here. And a few little style points on the juke, but not much room to maneuver after that. A couple of Jets there in on the stop. See if they stay on the ground for second down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to do it. They'll be taken down. The Jets get in there for the sack. Call it a loss of five, a big sack to bring up third down. Now that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football led to a sack. And that's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. Now as we look down, it appears we've got a jet shaking up on the play. And this is certainly not what you want to see in the final week of the year. We'll be back. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. They'll come out in the pistol. 
They'll look to throw. Throws a quick hitter on the slant. That's complete. It'll go as a gain of 12. And it's good enough for a Cleveland first down. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. It'll be a gain of four, and it's a second down. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. What terrifies defenses when they see slant routes thrown is that the receiver is on the move, and oftentimes he catches it and gets upfield. Has a really nice job rallying to him and stopping him for a minimal gain. They got to get to the 20 to keep the drive alive on third down. Defense sinking pass. They've got the nickel set out on third and six. They'll drop the throw. Oh, incomplete. Nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. He's lucky to be getting that one back. After what they've done with him all day long with all the targets trying to go after him, he's obviously got... Five yard line as this offense gets set to take over. Watch left, watch left. Let's go one more. Back. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And he's got his man on the out route. Give him 18 on that one. And that'll be good for a Cleveland first. Remember how much we enjoyed watching him last week? It's the same thing it's this one. Look at those numbers. <laughs> I'd hate to be a defender right now because no matter what they're throwing at him in terms of coverages, he's finding ways to defeat it. And even when he's covered, he's not covered. Hey, what is he doing? He's what, what's that term they use? He's uncovering and making, <laughs> making big catches. Really fun to watch. Simple slant route and part of a really nice hard throw by the quarterback. Nice timing between the quarterback and the receiver. They were perfectly in sync, and he put it right on him on the inside route. Now a handoff here to his running back. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They're facing a critical third down now as they try to hold on to this lead. They'll look to throw here. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. But, partner, anytime someone tells me that fundamentals are leaving the game, I'm going to show them this play because they couldn't get to the passer. So what do you have to do? Get your hands up in the passing lane, and they batted it away on a third down attempt. Hey, yikes, terrible kick headed straight for the sidelines. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. And New York set to take the feet. with a victory. Now the Browns offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. They have the lead, obviously, late in the game. I guess the good news for them is if for some reason they would make a mistake, a field goal does the opposition no good. Everyone loves to have a little bit of a cushion, and that helps you immeasurably. But the bottom line is, do all the things that you're taught in order to close out the game. Don't even let that become an issue. Yeah, but still a one-possession game. This one not fully over yet. But now here's a timeout defensively. Defensive timeout called by the Jets. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. That one looks like
looks like he'll throw here. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They'll give it to him right up the gun. And he'll be brought down. Now the Jets are going to burn another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he's brought down. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's a defense calling the timeout here. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. Going to give this time to the tailback. And he'll work his way inside the 30 now to the 28. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. I know you're trying to wring every yard out of a run, but I think nine yards there is ideal in this situation. Yeah, now next couple plays, you'll only need one yard. Keep that clock rolling with a lead here in the fourth. Yeah, what you're saying is maybe if it takes you one or two more runs to get the first down, that's extra time, extra plays. Really hurts the team on defense. Holding offense. So there you go, holding by the offense, and that'll push him back. Changes everything now as you try and figure out what your playbook has for you. Longer yardage situations, right, tougher to execute and pick up first downs. Back to throw. His throw incomplete. When you see passes knocked down by those guys I call the frustrated fullbacks, the linebackers, you know that in their zone coverage, they were able to drop, see the ball thrown, and react to it very quickly. On play action, they'll throw. And that is incomplete. It's always tough for the guys throwing the football when they think they've got a completion and the ball's almost there, and then someone sneaks a hand or two in and bats it away. And here's a big one now. Try to hold this lead. They're going to go for it here on fourth down. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. The open man is Smith. And he will have the first before he's brought down right on the chalk of the 20. A gutsy decision there going for it on fourth, but they got it, and that likely puts an end to this one. Indeed, it was gutsy because there's so many other options they probably could have exercised in that situation, but they bet on themselves, and it paid off. It's a 10-yard gain there, and it sets them up now first and goal. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there are more people there to get him down. His pass caught at the four. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Cleveland. Devin Smith, his ninth touchdown of the season. And the Browns add on to their lead. And that touchdown should make you feel comfortable. But do you really feel like it's totally over yet? Not totally, but I think you're pretty much there. Yeah, you've still got to make sure you stay with it, do all the right things down the stretch, especially on defense. But that touchdown there, you've got to feel good about your chances. Oh, I was just about to say he had missed an extra point all season, but there it is, his first miss, no good. Coons on now to kick this one away following the score. It's a short kick, taking it to 15. Oh, a little 360. Oh, man. <laughs> and they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Here's the Jet offense now. They head out to take over. What do you do here down like this in this situation? Do you maybe just pick something out of the playbook you haven't called in a while or you call it a day? You can do that or you pick something that's a staple for you and shoot. And oh, he coughed it up. And this is picked up by the Browns. And that might just submit it. A return for a late touchdown. The offense, they've had some sloppy moments. Sloppy there again on that one, and it could be the backbreaker. From a defensive perspective, if the offense is going to be sloppy, you've got to take advantage of that. That's what they've done all game long.
Coons now here to tack on the extra point. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21 points. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. It's a short kick, taken at the 15. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Start this drive in the air. And that will be incomplete. Four ticks left here on the clock. Whenever they're trying to attack a zone defense, you're trying to figure out. And now a timeout called defensively by the Browns. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. And we're hitting the end of this one, and it looks to probably be the final play. One receiver left, three to the right. One final shot. They'll look to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And this is dropped and incomplete. Well, there's a metaphor for how this one is gone. As time has run out on this ball game. Charles, we saw a lot of points go up in this one. Certainly defensively, stuff that they can look at on film, don't you think? No doubt about it. And they've got to go back and check where the errors are, how they're going to fix them and continue to get better at what they do. But they also need a little adjustment with their confidence. To give up that many points, even if you win a game, that can hurt you. So for the Browns, it's an 11th win of the year as they'll finish the regular season at 11-5. and five. And they'll be able to enjoy this one through the bye week before they get back at it again. Meanwhile, for the Jets, it'll be a 10-loss season as they wrap up 6-10. and 10. And they'll get the extra week to think about this one as they return to action in two weeks' time. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gawden. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. It's a win for the...